Hello and welcome, my name's Rob, aka Robbie Rome's, and I absolutely love to travel, make YouTube videos, and generally make a fool out of myself. <laughs> so in January 2022, me and Jazz headed on a life-changing four-month backpacking trip across South America. So this place is absolutely barking mad. I mean, we've been to some weird and wonderful places, especially in Asia, but this place takes the biscuit. So sit back, relax, and over the next three episodes, join us on this epic journey. Strangely enough, that there is Pablo Escobar's grave. By the way, if you're after some South America travel tips, have nothing else better to watch, or you want to see me and Jazz, aka the Super Gringos, trying to navigate around this weird and wonderful continent, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn notifications on. And now, for the moment you've all been waiting for, this is Four Months in South America. We made our way to mainland Colombia where we explored the Caribbean coast in Cartagena before a tragic boat ride to Tayrona National Park. By far the worst decision we've ever made. Like not even on this trip in our entire life. We then explored Medellin, famous for its huge communas, where we watched a football match and went on a weird Pablo Escobar tour. Strangely enough, that there is Pablo Escobar's grave. We then explored the town of Salento and the Cocora Valley, home to the world's tallest palm trees, before ending our Colombia trip in the capital, Bogota. Our next country was Peru, where we stayed in Lima for a few days, before heading to the desert in Huacachina, followed by an intense trip to the Amazon rainforest, where we saw many animals and insects. We then headed to Cusco and Machu Picchu, one of the new seven wonders of the world, before ending our Peru state with a stop at Puno and Lake Titicaca. So we attempted to cross the border from Puno in Peru to Bolivia. In a normal pre-Covid world, this would have been easy. The red tape and workers' strikes made this a royal pain in the arse. I'll cut a long frustrating story short. We took a two-hour ferry bus from Puno to the border town of Desiguardero. We arrived at the border crossing to find it was closed due to strikes and our slimy tuk-tuk driver was legitimately trying to mug us off because of this. We then had to take another one and a half hour bus to Kasani, the next closest border town, but we were against the clock to get there before the border closed. Now this was a real nightmare because Kasani was nothing more than a tiny, medieval looking village and staying there overnight was definitely not an option. We finally managed to cross into Bolivia just in time. Our next issue was getting to Copacabana to make the last bus to La Paz. So in stepped a random taxi guy who already had a carload of people but kindly made room in his boot for us. After a cramped ride into town we just about made it onto the last bus with seconds to spare and then had a five hour journey to La Paz including crossing Lake Titicaca on a wooden ferry while being sat on the bus. So we finally made it to La Paz which is the world's highest capital city. Um, bit of a mission to get here but anyway just around the corner from our hotel is one of the most iconic places in La Paz. It's called the Witch's Market. And there's all sorts of like herbs, spices, plants, all sorts of weird stuff. But I think the weirdest thing is baby llama fetuses that they have dead, like hanging up on the stalls and stuff. Um, supposedly, you're meant to put one of these fetuses in the building. Uh, the foundations of a new building for good luck. I've no idea why they do it, but it's not <laughs> its not the nicest thing to look at. Uh, pretty grim, but if you're in La Paz and you want to see something weird and wonderful, this is where you got to come. Absolutely barking mad. I mean, we've been to some weird and wonderful places, especially in Asia. 
but this place takes the biscuit. There's so much weird shit going on here, like it's bizarre, absolutely bizarre. Good fun though. Well, obviously this place is the world's highest capital city and uh, me and Jazz haven't acclimatised, even from being in Cusco, uh, Puno. Puno was actually higher than here, but we're still struggling with the altitude. So that's just something to bear in mind if you do come to La Paz. The main reason I say that is because most of the streets are like, really steep. And you fancy walking around everywhere. Um, yeah, you're gonna be out of breath and struggling, especially if you haven't acclimatised to the altitude. But I'm just gonna get on with it. So I've just been up the uh, Teleferico, the red line in La Paz, and we've done a few cable cars in cities like Medellin, uh, Quito, all that sort of stuff. But honestly, in La Paz, that is the best, like, most breathtaking views you'll ever get on a cable car in a city. Wow, honestly. So we're just getting our bags packed up and we've got a night bus tonight. We're going to a uni, which is kind of like a lot further south from here in the centre of Bolivia. And the night bus leaves at 9 o'clock and arrives at about 6 or 7 a.m. Um, hopefully it's not too bumpy and we can get a few hours kip. Uh, we're hoping to check into a hotel early tomorrow um, just in case we're knackered and just want to crash out for a bit. But the main attraction at uni is the Salt Flats. Um, so fingers crossed we're going to do a two night, three day tour. Um, just Google Salt Flats. In fact, you'll probably see, hopefully, the next time we record, um, we'll be setting off on our Salt Flats trip. Um, so yeah, hopefully going to be good. Looking forward to it. Just pray that we survive the night bus. morning it's just gone 20 past six and uh the night bus went all right actually we've got a few hours kip not obviously great as you can tell by the bags of my eyes but we're at our hotel the salt hotel in uni maybe let's check in early which is pretty good because it's only like 20 past six um if you hadn't noticed it's made of salt that's what's called the salt hotel each of these blocks here it's like made out of solid salt so yeah, um, we're going to get a few hours kip I think and then go and get our tour sorted for tomorrow, get our supplies and just have a chill out. But yeah, all in all, not too bad on the night bus. We survived anyway, so happy days. Now we've just started the tour and um, there's a few British people on here and a couple of Irish people. And the lad, the Irish lad that just jumped on the train, got his ass out for a photo. It's like the most Irish thing you've ever heard. <laughs> but yeah, nice views over the desert. Andy's mountain in the background. Yeah, good start to the trip. I'm starving. So hopefully we'll get some dinner in a minute. Hello oh, guys. Hi. <laughs> I think we're all in it. <laughs> Place we go in South America, Jazz's first impression. Shit hole. It is though, isn't it, Rob? I mean, look at it. It's a shit hole. I disagree with this place. It goes on forever. It's just a vast endlessness of white salt, which to me is pretty spectacular. I mean, just take a look around. There's literally no here. Place is just unbelievable. It's like obviously like any place you've ever been before. It's an 
So it's half six on day two on our salt flats tour. And as you can see, I'm as red as a fucking cherry tomato. Uh, safe to say I caught the sun yesterday, um, but just not round my eyes, which is not, <laughs> not particularly good. But yeah, we slept all right. Had a bit of a laugh last night after dinner. Um, yeah, we got to get back on the road in half an hour. So, just pulling ourselves together. <laughs> Hello, you big wolf. Hello. So we've made a quick stop off in San Cristobal, which is a little town on route to the place we're going. So we're heading further south from Uyuni towards the border of Argentina and Chile. And we're going to be stopping at a couple of these red lagoons where there's hopefully some flamingos and stuff like that. But yeah, we've stopped here because this is the cheapest place to buy beer. Um, Juan, the guide, says buy it here, otherwise we're going to be ripped off um, when we get to the place we're staying tonight. But I made a joke about Gringo Tax and it didn't go down particularly well with him. Says that it wasn't funny. He's on the coca leaves now. So He's on we'll, the coca we'll leaves. Be all right. <laughs> we'll we'll cheer up a bit. Give us half hour. <laughs> He'll be chewing his chops off. And we'll be his best friend again. Ah, uh, right. Vamos. We're on our second stop of the day and we're at this like weird geological rock formation place but it's cool because there's like loads of volcanoes in the background a lot of them sort of snow capped and if you'd have asked me what I would have pictured sort of South America to look like probably something like this so yeah pretty cool try not to get sunburned um, we're at, what did he say five thousand four and a half thousand meters now so we can't breathe but yeah Beautiful, stunning. It's a bit windy where we are, but such a spectacular place. We've pulled in at this lake and um, basically we're surrounded by snow-capped mountains. We're in quite a barren desert, it's the only way of describing it, with a lake full of pink flamingos. It's just like something out of a film or something from another planet anyway. It's kind of hard to believe that so many different landscapes can exist in like one sort of moment. I mean, where we are now, um, not too far from the Atacama Desert, Chile. So Bolivia shares a part of it. And we're not too far from there now, if you know where that is on the map. Um, but yeah, we are isolated right now. We are hundreds of miles away from fucking anything, really. It's just an incredible place. Our second night's accommodation was located by a natural hot spring in the middle of nowhere. Once we'd had dinner, we made our way down to the hot spring to soak in the red hot water whilst drinking cold beer under the crystal clear night sky. Now, I didn't get any footage of this, but let's just say this is one night that will really stay with me and everyone else on that group for the rest of our lives. We could clearly see the Milky Way, multiple shooting stars, planets, and a million things we didn't even know existed. For me, that was the stuff of dreams, and I genuinely feel lucky to be able to have experienced it. Morning. So that volcano behind us is like, not only perfectly formed, it's the southernmost point in Bolivia. So half of the volcano belongs to Bolivia, the half behind it belongs to Chile, and just that way we're by the border of Argentina as well. 
and it's 5,800 metres, which I believe is higher than the second base camp of Everest. I could be wrong, something like that. And in the middle, there's a crater lake where NASA have been scuba diving. Uh, highest point in the world where you can go scuba diving. I, d I don't think you can actually like arrange a trip or anything, but uh, that's what the guy said. But yeah, feeling a little bit worse for wear this morning, but seeing this definitely makes it better. Makes it all worth it. And the line stays still. And if you're wondering what on earth is going on here, we're actually taking a photo which will appear in twice. Very strange and a lot of effort at almost 5,000 metres. But yeah, here's the finished result. You're in the video now, you're on YouTube, <laughs> mate. Famous! Our final day was topped off by a few more stops before we headed back to a uni. So we're back in civilization after a few days doing the Salt Flats tour. We went for dinner with the group, which was pretty awesome. And it's weird when you do these tours because obviously the main thing you look forward to is the place. And the place 100% delivered. If you come into Bolivia, obviously you've got to come and do the Salt Flats. Um, but not only that, it's the people that you do it with that actually you know, make the trip what it is. And it was no different this time around. Fantastic group of people. We had such a laugh. Everybody got on like a house on fire. And yeah, from start to the end, we were just having a laugh the whole way around. So we'd highly recommend it. And uh, we did it with Red Planet and our guide, uh, Juan, was just a character in himself. Like, so funny, really knowledgeable. Um, yeah, don't know what else to say really, but great tour. So I just want to say a big shout out to Ella, Mark, Kelly and Killian, Ollie, Ariana, Christian, Veronica, Sean, Juan and the drivers for an amazing few days. It was honestly one of the best tours we've ever done and you guys absolutely made it. But the fun doesn't stop there so we've got to get a bus at half seven in the morning. I'm heading down to the Argentinian border um, and we're heading to the city of Salta so another new country tomorrow hopefully and we'll finally be getting out of this altitude I'm just trying to record this video and like holding the camera speaking it's just a chore like I'm out of breath so hopefully tomorrow when we go to Salta the altitude is a lot lower than here um, but yeah what a great few days the next day we made our way across the border into Argentina our sixth country in South America we're now in Salta in Argentina. We took like a, it felt like a three day bus. Um, we took multiple buses to get from Bolivia in the uni where we were doing the Salt Flats tour down to Salta. Uh, I think it was like 19 hours in the end. But yeah, um, we've come in with Mark and Ella who we met on the uh, Salt Flats tour and we've got a little apartment in Salta which is pretty cool. And today we're doing something cool. We're hiring a car and driving down to Cafe Arte, I think it's called. Uh, which is an upcoming wine region and hopefully this afternoon we're going to do some wine tasting and get out on some bikes to get to the various vineyards and stuff um, so finally Jazz is going to be happy um, doing something on this trip it involves drinking wine except I'm hungover except yeah she's feeling a little bit uh, hungover we were playing some cards and drinking some rum last night so I'm sure once she's had a couple of wines she'll be alright but yeah um, going to go get the car in a minute Fingers crossed, everything goes all right. I think the plan is we're just doing a bit of a sporadic tour of any wineries we can get to. It may involve biking, it may involve just walking, uh, it will depend on how strong the wines are but uh, yeah so far so good we've come to the first one uh, here in Cafe Arte happy days am I doing it right? 
Oh, you got like a bit of swirl. The technical term. Oh, that's absolutely delicious. The rosé for me so far is better than the white. What do you think? I prefer the white. I like this. I prefer the rosé. Rosé for me. Rosé for me. Um, yeah, it's <laughs> the plan today is to try and get to a few of the uh, various wine tasting places, but at this rate, I'm not sure how many we're going to get to. But, uh, cheers. <laughs> Matching bloody t shirts. Oh, that one is well That's oh. dangerous. Yeah, that is. <laughs> that is I'm not a red wine fan, but uh, no, no, that, that's. It's, it's, it's smoother than, than the red wine at the last. It is. Happy wine tasting. <laughs> <laughs> So we've just biked it from town to this next vineyard, which is a little bit further out of the way. Uh, but the views are spectacular. Huge mountains in the background. And it looks a proper vineyard, this. Proper settle. Just stick your mouth under it, Ella. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Such a great idea. Oh. So we're back on the bikes. And we're heading, we think, to the final vineyard of the day, which is the furthest one out of town. I think it's about two miles on the bike, so the wine's definitely starting to go to the head. A little bit more difficult to push the old pedals, but nice little afternoon, really. Happy days. Have we been watered? So, good morning. You're joining me from the balcony on our little... Um, Cafe Arte apartment where we stayed last night. Lovely little sleepy town. Plenty of vineyards around here, definitely worth coming. We're just about to load the car up, which we hired yesterday, and head back up to Salta. Actually on the way is this incredible scenery. It's like a mix of like Arizona type, rocky, sandy, red looking mountains. It's incredible. But yeah, if you are coming to Salta, 100% worth hiring a car or getting the bus down to Cafe Arte and having a couple of days. We've really enjoyed it. Yeah, later on today, we're going to Salto Airport and we're going to fly to Buenos Aires, which is the capital of Argentina. So, looking forward to that. Yeah, so we've just made a quick stop off on our route back to Salta. And uh, the landscape, like I was on about earlier, is just spectacular. This bit looks a bit like Arizona, sort of Grand Canyon thing, but breathtaking. We're going to get back in the car, eat some more bread and cheese, and uh, yeah, head on to the Devil's Canyon or whatever it's called. But crazy, crazy scenery. Hello, everyone. So enjoying this beautiful landscape in the first couple of stops in Argentina, it was time for us to head to the capital, Buenos Aires, which was an easy two hour flight away. Now I didn't record too much in Buenos Aires during our few days there, but we explored the city, had an hilarious time watching Mark get his hair butchered by a mature mamacita, and we went to an Argentine tango show. Once we'd taken in the hustle and bustle of Buenos Aires, we caught a three and a half hour flight south to Al Calafate in the Argentine part of Patagonia. Uh, this morning we had an early start, our flight was at six from Buenos Aires airport and we flew down to Al Cafete, which is in Patagonia. We've got a high car, pretty straightforward, we've just been to a cafe, 
for some brekkie. And now we're gonna to head to the Perito Moreno Glacier, which is one of the biggest glaciers in the world. Um, one of the main things you can obviously do down in the Argentine Patagonia side. Um, so yeah, looking forward to it. We've just got a bit more freedom again with the car. Um, so we can just go at our own speed, enjoy the place, and yeah, hopefully it will be cool. Yeah, so the boat that we've just been on was actually pretty big, you know, there was best part of 60, 70 people on it. And I've just come to this sort of lookout point over the glacier and the boat is like that, a little dot, just to give you a bit of perspective. It's crazy. There's just been a couple of giant, um, giant blocks of ice fall off and it creates like this little tidal wave. It just looks insane. The noise is just ferocious. Morning, uh, day two in Patagonia. Uh, we're back in Al Cafeate. Um, plan today is we're gonna do a road trip from here to Al Shelton, which is the next biggest town. It's about three, three and a half hours. Um, but along the way, we're hoping to see some pretty amazing views. And we're heading towards Mount Fitzroy, which is one of the main attractions there. Um, if you've ever seen the Patagonia logo of the clothing company, uh, the little mountain in there is actually Mount Fitzroy, so, but yeah, I'm looking forward to today actually. Heard this road trip's meant to be incredible, so. I've just pulled over to have a look at this river. Uh, honestly looks photoshopped. I've never seen a color blue like it in my life. Pure blue. Look at that. I mean, how is it that blue? It makes no sense. So we've pulled over and that there, you can just about make it out, is the iconic Mount Fitzroy Mountain. Um, unfortunately, as you can see, it's covered in cloud at the minute. And the shot I wanna get is basically from this road leading into the mountain. Make a nice photo, but, but yeah, the drive has been nothing short of spectacular long massive open roads um, you probably come across a car maybe once every 20 30 minutes if that just literally in this vast expanse of incredible scenery there's glaciers over there massive rocky snow-capped mountains huge like areas of just barren land um, it's incredible and if there's one place on this earth that makes you feel pretty small it's probably here I mean just look at this Man, we are lucky to get to uh, come to places like this, I'm telling you, and this space especially. I mean, don't get me wrong, we've been to some incredible places on this trip. Um, beautiful beaches, jungles, mountains, but I think this for me is probably the pinnacle. I don't know, I just love this kind of scenery. And I can't, apart from the car, I can't hear a thing. 
It's quiet, it's peaceful, absolutely beautiful. So it's just gone 20 past eight and obviously I'm up and about. Beautiful sunrise this morning. So I'm about to do the Fitzroy hike here in Al Shalton. Uh, supposedly one of the most beautiful hikes in the whole of Patagonia. The route length is about 20 to 24 kilometers and it's meant to take up and down about eight hours. The thing I'm worried about is the last kilometer, uh, the ascent is like 500 meters, 400 meters. So, yeah, I might struggle on that. I'm not feeling particularly fit. Don't have hiking boots, don't have sticks like the rest of the people that I can see about to start the trail. So hopefully I'll be all right, but uh, yeah, let's see what happens. And if you're wondering what Jazz is up to today, I've not long downloaded uh, Grey's Anatomy series one to 20 or whatever it is. So she's gonna be living up at the hotel, which I might add, has a jacuzzi, spa, swimming pool. So whilst I'm out uh, grafting me knackers off, she's gonna be living it up in the hotel. But that's one of them. Hopefully it'll be worth it. Tell you what, I might not be able to breathe, but my eyes are still working. The sun's just come up at, um, above the mountains over there. Oh, and boy, does it look fucking spectacular. Oh. To be fair, I could just stand here for half an hour and then go back, but yeah, we'll carry on going. So the good news is, we've got one kilometre to go. The bad news is, there's a sign there that says you need extreme physical condition, proper footwear, so on and so forth. So let's hope we do all right. So I've, uh, I've just come down off the mountain and to be fair it was a bit of a shame because up there you couldn't really see anything with the blizzard and stuff like that but the wind up there was like nothing else I've ever felt because uh, it's blown off the glacier it was like freezing um, my hands just went completely numb and then yeah there was people being blown over and shit quite a few people huddled under the boulders eating their packed lunch which I did but yeah, I tried to get some photos and a bit of video, but it was just so painfully cold up there. Like the elements were just full on against you. And I've uh, I've come back down the hill, which was equally as hard as coming up. Like if anyone's into mountain hiking and shit like that, um, I mean for me it's as painful going down as it is going up. There was a couple having a domestic on the way up. I think the woman didn't want to go up. Fair enough. There was another woman that was crying on the way up. Um, so yeah, that last kilometre. The sign that says there, uh, you need uh, decent physical health to get up there, it's definitely true. Yeah, that was some hard work. And I think the hike overall has been worth it, it's been incredible. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna have a chill out, have a drink. And I got 8K back to town. Um, yeah, awesome.
So we've left the cooler and beautiful Patagonian landscape. Uh, we flew up to Buenos Aires, we spent a day there, and we flew up to Iguazu Falls. We are hoping the weather would be a little bit better than it is right now. Um, so for like the past day that we've been here, it's just been like cloudy, overcast, really humid, uh, and occasionally pissed it down. But anyway, today we're gonna to go and see the world famous Iguazu Falls, one of the seven natural wonders of the world, I'm told, if you're into little weird geeky things like that. Um, but yeah, looking forward to it. So we're on the Argentinian side in Puerto Iguazu, and then tomorrow we're gonna to cross over to Brazil um, spend a couple of nights in a hotel on the Brazil side and then go and see it from there. So we've arrived at uh, Iguazu National Park which we're on the Argentinian side of. Uh, the bus here was pretty easy to be honest and um, we're just making our way down to the little train uh, station. So there's a little train that will take you, is it 5 or 7k around to the Devil's Throat I think is what it's called which is the biggest most powerful part of the entire Iguazu Falls so we'll go around there and then maybe come back and have a little walk down to one of the other bits. If you're wondering, I didn't fall in. Uh, we just went down to the Devil's Throat part, and uh, yeah, it's fucking powerful. And the spray just goes up in the air, goes straight back in your face. Hence, uh, yeah. hence looking like we both fell in. But yeah, it's an amazing place. Just be prepared to get a bit wet. So following on from our trip at the Argentine side the other day, um, so we travelled from Porto Iguazu just literally a few hundred meters that way across the border into Brazil yesterday. There was a bit of a problem um, getting through the border, the customs control, because our passports hadn't been stamped on the way into Argentina. Sounds weird, but we asked them to stamp it and they were like, no, you don't need a stamp. And it's caused us a few headaches. So another tip, always make sure your passport gets stamped on the way in. So yeah, after like 10, 15 minutes of them arguing with each other, they were like, on this one occasion, we're gonna let you through, but normally it would either be a fine or you'd be detained. So yeah, today we're just gonna grab an Uber and then we're gonna go to the Brazilian side of the falls, which is meant to give you the best panoramic view. There we have it, Iguazu Falls, both sides done. Uh, just different perspectives really. If you want to get up a bit closer and do some more walking, go to the Argentine side. If you want to see more of a panoramic view, come to the Brazil side, but uh, if you come into both countries, just do them both. It's not particularly hard or expensive. Tomorrow we fly to Sao Paulo in Brazil, which is the biggest city in the whole of South America. So yeah. Iguazu Falls, ticked off the bucket list, amazing place, 
and the Brazil adventure continues. We caught a flight from Iguazu Falls to Sao Paulo where we spent a couple of days exploring the city without really filming too much. So as you can see, um, we're just in the main park here in Sao Paulo. It's strange because um, it's obviously South America's biggest city and most of it that we've seen so far has just been huge skyscrapers, built up roads and stuff like that. So it's nice to get out in the park and get on the bike. But we're going to go and have a picnic, well, a salad, not really a picnic. Just finding somewhere nice to go. So the language barrier uh, gets even worse to be honest. Just we don't literally have a clue, like many if any words whatsoever. And the language, uh, the Portuguese is just so different to Spanish, it's nothing like it. I think we mentioned before it kind of sounds Russian and uh, it might as well be because we don't understand, they don't understand us. Get there in the end, but uh, yeah, not as easy as the rest of South America. Our next destination was Padachi, a well-preserved colonial Portuguese town backed by jungled mountains located on Brazil's southeast coast. Yeah, so yesterday we caught the bus from Sao Paulo and we're now in Padachi. The bus was like, I think it was about six hours in the end. And the weather when we got here was absolutely torrential rain um, all the roads were flooded the taxi driver couldn't even get us to the the place we're staying which is this nice little apartment we had to walk a couple of blocks away and we were literally wading through like two foot <laughs> deep uh, like flood water crazy but yeah weather's nice today and uh, we're just chilling in our apartment and we've seen these little uh, monkeys yeah, the type of monkey is a common marmoset and yeah, they, they were just coming along the wall down here. They hopped on the telephone wire, straight past the kitchen window. It's a quaint little town actually, we haven't seen much of it. Uh, tomorrow we're going to hire bikes and do a bit of exploring. Then in a few days time we're heading to Rio, where fingers crossed everything goes to plan. We'll get there, have a few days, and then on Saturday we're going to Rio Carnival. So we've absolutely dropped on. Um, it was rearranged, it's normally in February, I think every year, but because of COVID, it's had to be pushed back. And we didn't even know about it. We thought we'd missed our chance, but um, yeah, we've got tickets for Saturday. We're gonna meet up with the six people that we've met along the trip. We're all going to the same carnival thing. We're all sitting in the same area. So it's gonna be a big party in Rio to finish the trip off, which is gonna be pretty sweet. We are in the old historic centro in Parachi, which uh, looks pretty old actually. I mean, it's described as the old historic centre. Yeah. But yeah, there's these uh, like cobbled things that are like impossible to walk on. Yeah, exactly. If you ain't paying attention and you're hungover, then uh, it makes for an ankle breaking experience. So we've come down to the little uh, harbour in Parachi and we have no idea why but I'm pretty sure this is a road that's completely flooded by the sea but yeah there's cars trying to drive through here but I mean I hazard a guess this is like two or three foot deep maybe four foot crazy After a few chilled days in Padachi, it was time to head to the wild and wonderful Rio de Janeiro, the final destination of our entire South America trip. So, welcome to Rio. Uh, we arrived here yesterday from uh, Parachi and it took us about, what was it, six hours in the end. The bus was meant to be four and a half, but it ended up taking like six, which was annoying to say the least, but the traffic around Rio is just crazy. Uh, obviously this weekend it's the rescheduled Rio Carnival, which we're 
buzzing to do. First day in Rio, we've jumped straight in an Uber and come to the area of Santa Teresa. And we're at the famous steps called the Celeron Steps, or Celeron Stairs. And they're all individually tiled steps. A uh, really famous place in Rio. So, welcome to Rio. So we've come up to Sugarloaf Mountain. We're actually halfway up. So there's two cable cars. You get one to the halfway mountain and then another all the way up. And uh, yeah, another tip we got sort of pushed in the way of is they do veggie slash vegan hot dogs somewhere around here. So we're, we're, yeah, we're not taking in the view as much because we're trying to find the hot dogs. And look at this, it's like Jazz's dream. Veggie hot dogs and we've just come along and found an Aperol Spritz van which is right on Jazzy's uh, radar Aperol Spritz in hand So we're stood right on the top of Sugar Road Mountain and uh, the view is back in the it's absolutely incredible and the whole of Rio, oh, it's just amazing there's loads of vultures just flying around what a view, man. Morning, you join us from Copacabana Beach and uh, yeah, it's beautiful. The one thing I will add though, it's a number one tip for visiting here. Don't drop a full bag of crisps uh, onto the sand because within a matter of seconds, you'll have half the pigeons in Rio trying to eat your feet and the crisps that are like, in and around your feet. Like right, these guys, look at this. Good morning. It's day three in Rio and uh, we're hoping to go up the Christ the Redeemer uh, in a minute. Just gonna get an Uber, fingers crossed we can get up there. And it's not cloudy like the other day. I don't think it will be, I mean touch wood. But I had a walk to Starbucks this morning and I had a cloud in the sky. It's meant to be pushing 30, 32 degrees. So uh, yeah, should be a good day. After that we're hoping to go to either the Botanical Garden or one of the parks. And then we're gonna have another afternoon down the beach. Jazz is adamant she's going home with some kind of colour. But yeah, hoping to get in an Uber in a set and then, yeah, see what happens. Just at the Christ the Redeemer, uh, going up the escalators on a 700 meter high mountain, which seems pretty bizarre. But here we are. Other facts that I just googled. I think it was built to celebrate Brazil's independence from Portugal. They weren't sure what statue they were going to build, but they knew they were going to build something big. And uh, yeah, this is it. I think I mentioned before, it's one of the uh, wonders of the world. So we've seen Great Wall of China, we've seen the Pyramids of Giza, and now we've seen Christ the Redeemer. So we've been and done Christ the Redeemer, came back down and had a subway, <laughs> really getting the authentic taste of Rio with a nice six-incher. We've come to park Largo, Largo, I don't know, 
um, but yeah I think there's a nice little cafe place which we won't be going to but it makes for a nice photo so I'm led to believe with the Christ Redeemer in the background but uh, yeah lush jungle like gardens and uh, it's just a bit cooler than being out in the mid afternoon sun So we've got a uh, five, ten minute Uber down to the beach. This is the second most famous beach in Rio, uh, Ipanema. I think I've said it right. Probably not. I seem to butcher every single foreign word anywhere in the world that I go. But yeah, it's uh, beautiful, just like the Copacabana beach. Um, the sun's at that sort of angle in the sky where it makes everything just look lush. Getting on for golden hour. But I would probably say this one's a bit more picturesque. Some big mountains over to the right. It's absolutely stunning. Later that day we went to watch the Flamenco match at the Maracana Stadium, a mecca for football fans all around the world and it was packed with 80,000 crazy Brazilians cheering on their team. I've been to many football matches before, but the atmosphere here was unlike anything I've ever experienced. These fans would literally die to see their team win. Our last big night in Rio was of course the Rio Carnival, considered the biggest carnival in the world and we were lucky enough to get brilliant seats at the Samba Drone where we'd be able to watch all of the Samba School Parade. Now for this we were reuniting with our friends Dom and Abby, Ella and Mark and Cecilia and Fred and for us this was the perfect way to round off our trip. And in typical fashion we started with some pre-drinks before heading on the subway to the Samba Drone. We continued to enjoy the parade until about 2am before calling it a night, although the parade did continue until 5am. So wow, Rio Carnival, all I'm going to say is what a bloody experience. We really couldn't have finished our trip on a bigger high with the best people. And it was a strange old feeling after being away for four months to finally be facing the idea of coming home back to the UK. So after what feels like, I don't know, three days of catching planes and taxis and buses and stuff. We're finally back in the UK, um, we landed at Heathrow last night, um, we got in quite late in the end, came back to the hotel, had a kip and this morning had the best ever English breakfast, um, we haven't had one for so long and it was top of the, the list to be honest, so chuffed about that, I haven't got a cold, it's just hay fever, um, the second I get back in the UK at this time of year it just kills me every time. I thought it was like COVID or something and then I was like, oh shit, eyes are running, sneezing, snotting. Anyway, um, we're shortly going to catch an Uber into London and then get the train home. My mum and a few other people don't know we're actually coming back yet. We said it was like a couple of weeks time, so we're going to try and surprise them. And we're buzzing to go and see Arch, uh, Waldo and Penelope. We're going to get in an Uber in a couple of minutes. And yeah, back home. What a strange feeling. Just like that, we're back home. As if we never even went and it was all a dream. <laughs> Just sneak around the back. Well, fuck. <laughs> well, 
blow me down. <laughs> no, son. You all right? Hello, you're all right. Oh, Jesus. So yeah, how do I summarise this trip? It's always hard to put into words really. A trip of this magnitude over four months, exploring seven different countries and experiencing these interesting cultures is so hard to put into a few words. South America as a continent has absolutely everything a traveller would ever want and need. Although we barely scratched the surface, we still saw and experienced so much. We're very fortunate to be able to travel and experience these weird, wonderful and breathtaking places. And just like every single trip we've ever been on, it's always the people you meet along the way that make it. We met countless friendly locals who helped us out of sticky situations time after time. We met people who were genuinely happy for us to be exploring their country. And of course, the friends you make along the way. So if you're watching this and you're one of them people I'm talking about, have a beer on me. Uh, just don't send me the bill. So yeah, thank you all so much for watching this series. The time and effort that goes into making these videos is ridiculous, I'm sure you're probably aware but I'm actually made up that people do enjoy watching them. So if you've enjoyed this one or any of the South America videos, please drop a like on the video, subscribe to my channel if you don't already, leave me a comment below with your favourite part. And yeah, that's it, I'll catch you all in the next video.